Why hello there, this is Box Productions, and welcome to another episode of Path of Exile. In our last episode, we... I don't even remember, it's been so long. Something about a foul-mouthed pirate and killing enough sea creatures to make Aquaman drown himself in a gallon of Ben Jerry's. Something like that. that the impending end of the world hasn't affected the animal population around here. So I guess we'll mess it up instead. And after a little bit of searching around and more than a little bit of murder, we find the locket we were looking for. Now all we have to do is give it back to its rightful owner. Or at least I'm assuming the rightful owner. I mean he is a pirate so you never know. Y'all remember way back when when we first came here and I made a Bolton Thugs and Harmony reference that I'm pretty sure nobody picked up on? Good times. Me look it! <laughs> oh, me darling. Me beautiful Meredith. How I miss your shuddering bosoms, your quivering thighs. Oh, she had a heart to melt an iceberg, and teeth the size of a... Ooh. Well, anyway, I, I thank you greatly. Please, whatever else be in that lockbox, take your pick from it. This locket be the only treasure I need. I feel like I've had similar conversations with guys that just got out of prison. It was a quick conversation that I missed where we were asked to come back here and retrieve a map. Just so you're not confused. Sometimes I wonder. With all the undead we've seen throughout our adventure here, I wonder if we fought the same one several times. Like they could be walking around minding their own business, you know, right after they've been raised from the dead once again, for the upteenth time or whatever. They see us coming and they just sob themselves. So they know what's about to happen. Just like that one guy that kept rolling down the steps over and over again surf ninjas. Remember that movie? I remember that movie. Oh wow, we actually haven't seen too many cars this playthrough. I've been kind of unlucky about that. Hey there, spiders. How you doing? Eh, 
And look at that. We found the entrance to the next level. Which we will not be using right now. We have things to do first. Fear gnaws at the entrails of the faithful and the faithless alike. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the future. An empire requires leadership that can assuage those fears through example, through wisdom, through strength. An emperor lights the way through the darkened caverns of uncertainty. Another day, another trial. I'm sure we all remember the deadly cold hangers of discomfort. Looks like the monsters are doing more damage than the traps. Shine boldly so that all may find you when the night falls. Yeah, I feel bad for all the people that had to bring all these books down here. This was the only entrance. Now that we found Malagaro's fifth grade art project, we can get out of here. I imagine it was no easy feat removing that abomination from its tomb. Of the horrors that must still lurk beneath the fell shrine. Well, I suppose you'll be meeting abominations aplenty where you're going next. Place that map upon Malagaro's reverie device and remember, hope for the worst. At least then you'll be partially prepared for what's to come. And wouldn't you know it, this pathway is blocked as well. Maybe somebody's playing a surprise birthday party for me. And they all want me coming in beforehand. That'd be cool. When I was part of Piety's expedition into the Chamber of Sins, I stumbled upon a secret passage. It appears to have been constructed by the Inquisitor for the purpose of conveying his creations from his laboratory via an ancient cave system to the surrounding countryside without detection. These caves seem to feed out into what was once farmland near our former village. It may prove a useful route for you, although the passage was locked when I last stood before it. Let us hope that the key remains somewhere nearby. This place hasn't changed. Still full of creatures that want to murder us to death. But since we already kind of seen what this place has to offer, let's skip ahead until we find something interesting. Hello to you, great dreamer. We have woven a tale together in days past. 
Perhaps we shall again. We make mighty stories in time. And now I have daunting task before me. The last in my great journey. Near to us, cast a shadow. A monster awaits. Is his name. A beauteous eight leg. Twisted grotesque by the master of these loathsome halls. I wish to give this eight leg the merciful peace he deserves, and to save what is still beautiful, the elixir that only black death can make. Please, will you fight? Kill this black death. Take the eight legs venom for me. I may be fearsome warrior, but Black Death's master has made him into a thing more monstrous than even I can best. Who knows? Perhaps Black Death is too strong even for you. Well, we found their old pal Silk. And once again, it looks like he's got himself caught up in some nonsense he has no business being in. But we'll deal with him later. It's more disturbing or neat that he made this out of his own viscera. I mean, he probably fit right in with all those people that like to make art out of like bodily waste and light parts and junk like that. Assuming he doesn't try to kill all of them, which he probably would. Welcome to round two with Maligaro. And as you can imagine, he's learned a few new tricks since the last time we saw him. And it should come as no surprise that Maligaro has control of the Black Death that Silk was talking about. Which adds a little extra difficulty to this fight. My mana is gone. In addition to the Black Death, Maligaro can also summon an old foe that we fought in the past. Even after you kill both of his companions, he still has a couple of tricks up his sleeve to keep you on your toes. Just keep an eye on your health meter, and soon enough you'll be able to make a little soul food out of him.
brutal construction nears completion, and now only the wretched Dodri Darktongue remains. Unlike her compeers, who, in undeath, have yearned for the familiar, Dodri appears drawn to the old wounds of calamity. The cataclysm took some, and left much that a parasite like Dodri might enjoy. I shall meet you in San, where I hope you shall make swift and bloody work of that foul hag. rewards you with honor and mercy when she rises up to claim what is hers. Yes, this elixir, so aged and potent, shall be life-giving draught that she sips upon first waking. It is my gift to her, my wedding gift. Great dreamer, you will be wrapped in silk and finery and made welcome at our wedding feast. Guest of honor, and oh, what a feast we all shall enjoy! What? He's intending to make matrimony with Arakali? My word, that's quite a story, even for Sil. Yes, I know that name, and the place to which it is purportedly attached. A temple to the north, now in ruins. If Silk intends unholy congress with this Arakali, that is the most likely place we would seek it. Unfortunately, Arakali's temple lies beyond that which now belongs to Ralakesh. To reach the many-legged goddess, you must first draw to some conclusion with the many-faced god. Keep your wits about you. What you tell me of Silk, this I understand, though I do not want to. I have spent many nights pondering Silk's journey, why he has stepped from the spirit path. Now I know. He has walked into the eight arms of blind lust, Arakali. Silk is a warning to us all. He is trying to take the short trail to greatness. To the story Spirit has made for him. Silk tries to steal his story, but now he holds only a lie. Please, you must find the place where this Arakali sleeps in her web of shadow. You must stop Silk before he wakes her, a mistake that we all will come to regret. The Spirit tells me this is so. One less twisted intellect perverting our world. There is still much to be done, but at least we can rest easier in the knowledge that Melagaro and his foul creations will trouble Rayclass no longer. Here. I know that you and Groost didn't see eye to eye, but I'm sure he would have wanted to recognize this deed. It's the act of a warrior, after all. Farewell. And with that taken care of, it's time to go find that hidden passageway. It's kind of tough watching Silk make a full album, mm. so, you know what I mean? I mean, we've all had that friend that meets someone, they go on about how amazing this person is and all that and then after a while they start spending less and less time with you and the little time they do spend with you is only because they're allowed to all the while you're just thinking to yourself yeah, hopefully they get out of this web they've been caught up in but seriously though dude's been a wife a giant spider and that's no good I think he's trying to kill me with methane. 
like making me OD on Jinkum or something. to justice is slender and perfidious, fraught with missteps of ambition and despair, egotism and doubt. Should you choose this road, beware those who would waylay your hopes and disembowel your dreams. Remain sure and remain true. It's gonna suck to watch this for anyone that's ever stepped on like a table saw or something. I'm not exactly sure how anyone would step on a table saw in the first place, but I'm sure it's happened somewhere. Feel free to avert your eyes if this has ever happened to you. That'll do it for this episode of Path of Exile and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. It really helps out the channel. This has been JPAX, aka Box Productions, and I'll see you next time. Hello. Yes, Relicish? The god of many faces. I read about this god when I looked after the museum in Theopolis. It said he was obsessed with governance, in particular the control of humanity through our base animal instincts. He ruled over the citizens of one unfortunate Val city. Alas, the name escapes me. Yet I do recall that his experiments brought his subjects to the brink of extinction, and that he was forced to enslave many a primitive Asmerian of the time so as to repopulate his domain. Though I shudder at the thought, I can only imagine that Ralikesh has rather similar plans now. Fascinating case that flies in the face of all that is natural. Whalem is undead for sure. Something we have in spades in Rayclast. But a sentient, reasonable ghost? Now that is rare indeed. When we talk, I feel as if I'm staring into the breach. 
witnessing that which man was not meant to know. I have theorized about what animates the pirate's essence, how he manages to manifest on this earth once again. I think I shall compile my observations and speculations into a book. Yes, Eremir's Elucidations of Undeath. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? My heart weeps for our old home, but what the spirit gives, we must embrace. The spirit, it claims who it needs to, when it needs to. There is no sense in sadness. I watch silk for many days, scurrying to this old Val stone, scurrying to that old Val ruin, always muttering. He talked and talked and talked, yet I heard no one answer. The spirit warned that I should stay away from him. It pained me. Silk is my friend, yet I must listen to spirit. I go from Silk's side, and now he is gone from mine. I do not know where Silk go. But I see him in dreams. He is caught in great spider web that stretch into darkness. And that spider web? It is full of bones. More bones from more people than I ever see in my life. If you find Silk, please free him from the web. Don't let him become bones like the rest. Rayclast has changed. Once, I knew my place in this world. I knew my place within the spirit. Now, doorways have opened. Doorways I can neither see nor touch, but through which the spiritless ones pass all the same. The spiritless ones must be driven back. Their doors must be closed. May the great spirit guide you in your battles against these ancients that mean us nothing but ill. I belong to no one but the spirit. I have no need for the sweet words and caresses of a ghost. Waylam, he makes me laugh, and he hears the voice of the spirit. Not in the same way I do. His spirit speaks of the great waters beyond this land. He pays heed to the spirit, and the spirit loves him for it. I do not. It is better to speak to the dead than no one at all. Waylam knows the spirit, but he will not know me. Don't get me wrong, I've witnessed many unsettling things in my lifetime, but a spectral corsair living next door to me? We reside in dark times indeed when the living need share their quarters with the dead. I didn't think it possible for Silk to grow any more peculiar, but then I've been wrong about so many things since coming to Rayclast that I shouldn't have been at all surprised. Still. It's interesting that his behavior of late has mirrored that of certain Templar zealots I had the dubious pleasure of meeting back in Theopolis. Like them, Silk appeared obsessed with finding answers to this reality in some ethereal realm of divinity. For my part, I prefer to keep faith in this world. The answers that come from beyond are seldom the ones we want. My poor Groost, a kind man. A strong man. And now... I begged him not to meddle with that relic. It washed ashore after the earthquake and Groost simply had to know whether it was a danger to us. To me. The unholy thing within that device. It possessed Groost. Turned him into a monstrosity. We fled the village and as I turned back, I saw... He was killing them. The stragglers, killing them all, even the children. My Groost is dead. That thing that has stolen his body. Please, destroy it. I'm aware that you and Groost had something of a commercial relationship prior to his... accident. As is the Asmeri custom, Groost's few possessions have now passed to me. I'm by no means the warrior he was, yet I know my blades and bows well enough. At least it's something I can do to honor his memory and to keep my mind off things. A temptress and a predator. Thal legends say she crawled up from the blackest of pits during the creation of the world. No, her beginnings were far more mundane. 
A mortal harlot whose endless lust for loin and lecherous delight saw her transformed into the very image of her dark desires. The Spinner of Shadows, they once called her. She sees herself as a regular goddess of love and has the romantically forged temple to prove it. That's where you'll find her. Yet there's little romance to the lady herself. At least, I doubt the corpses that now embrace her carapace would think so. Answering the call of a royal invitation, I visited the Spinner of Shadows as an emissary for a small and fragile alliance of gods. Mostly weak deities huddling together in terror of being consumed by their greaters. At this time, Queen Arakali ruled an empire, and so invited me to gaze upon her mighty works with appropriate wonder. If I had looked past this pretense, I may have chanced to see her hidden desire to have me share her bed. For years I lay trapped in her webbed sheets. Some days she enjoyed my prowess. Other days we enjoyed each other. Yet this illusion of love and leisure simply veiled the morbid reality that I was not free to leave. I languished under her bewitching spell until the day the spider was betrayed by her own flies and sealed within that temple of her own fevered making. From what I can recall, Arakali was a vowel fertility goddess, a rather unsettling union of sexuality and mortality. Whilst usually presenting herself as a large arachnid, Arakali would often assume human form, a ruse intended to lure mortals into the act of copulation. The entries were vague about the gender of her prey. After satiating her carnal desires, she would then quench her divine thirst, draining her erstwhile lover of all bodily fluid. Her acolytes would then collect the desiccated husk and give it a decorative placement in Arakali's unholy temple. I fear that Silk knows not the true nature of the marriage he so desperately seeks. I have asked questions of spirit, and it has answered in dreams that wake me with screaming. Arakali will suck all life from this land, leave only empty husks and dusty bones. There will be no spirit, no us, no thing left to love and laugh. Only husks and dust and Arakali. I have climbed the great eight leg web. I know the eight legs like no one. This eight leg, this black death, is one of the oldest and most fearsome eight legs in all this land and beyond. To its shame, it was made pet, plaything by the malicious master of this place. For years countless, it grew in pain. Pain is all it knows, all it can understand, all it can give. End Black Death's pain, for all at once. My great journey led me to places of great power beyond even your stories, great dreamer. I am carried on legs and webs and shadows. That is all you 